And so being able to talk to people, other creators, basically, um, that are also entrepreneurs is very, very helpful on the journey. Um, and then also just, you know, people that have a completely outside perspective, like don't know anything about sports, don't know anything about the creator economy, but they still like are incredibly supportive and still let you know that they resonate with like what you're doing and that it's like helping them somehow. So, yeah, I don't really like to get into the, I don't really like to get into the tangent, like the, 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 the technical stuff, because I do feel like success is what you said. I feel like it really comes down to mental health and being able to, because we're entrepreneurs and I feel like the hardest part of being an entrepreneur is, you know, we may have family, nothing wrong with family, nothing wrong with friends that support us, but if they're not in business, then they don't understand, you know, they don't understand the grind. Um, and so finding like-minded individuals who go through the same pain points, it's, it's always, it's always nice. It's always nice to have a community around that stuff. I, I like to consider it community branding, not personal branding, not corporate branding. I like to consider it community branding. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to take that one that you said, you said it's called a, a content content fit. I think that's a great way to put it because I think a lot of people stress about finding their audience. Um, and sometimes even if you do the prep, like your audience evolves and grows and changes. And so sometimes that fit happens funny enough, naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so why don't you tell me a little bit about, um, some of your community, like who, who are the types of people and who are the, the types of inspiration that you've had that, that have helped you kind of, um, continue to evolve yourself and have helped you get through some of those tough times. Definitely. I have a great community of, I mean, well, one like family and friends, but, um, just great community in sports, just being an athlete, working in the sports industry before starting my company, um, so it's always great when it doesn't feel like, you know, networking, like these people oh, at yeah. these companies are just my friends. Um, so that's great. Have a great founder community. That's really important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, in my first year, just like connecting with other founders, but also other founders that have similar businesses or business aspirations. Like I'm not building a startup. I'm not raising venture capital funding. And so being able to talk to people, other creators basically, um, that are also entrepreneurs is very, very helpful on the journey. Um, and then also just, you know, people that have a completely outside perspective, like don't know anything about sports, don't know anything about the creator economy, but they still like are incredibly supportive and still let you know that they resonate with like what you're doing and that it's like helping them somehow. I think that's really important too. So like you have your community in your industry, you have your community of people that are doing similar things. Um, but I think it's also important to like diversify and just make sure you're getting inspiration from other places. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, one thing that, that you mentioned there was, uh, you know, that really brought up a memory of mine is, is anytime I get like a, a comment on, you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, where a community member of mine has been like, you've really helped me pass this hurdle. You've really helped me pass this. Like that, that, that's my, where I feel my purpose is, is, is you're aware, like that's what keeps you going is knowing that you're helping, knowing that you're helping other people. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred hundred percent. So where do you see yourself going? Like what, what if you, you start journaling, you start doing all this stuff. And so as you've continued to evolve and try stuff yourself, what are you starting to really see with the evolution of, of your brand? Yeah. I mean, I think it's um, only going to grow from here, not to sound cocky, but I just like, you know, if you're, if you, if you are someone going back to the point of like, how do you define success? Like, if you're someone that holds yourself to showing up every single day and like being consistent and putting in the outputs and like really simplifying what that looks like, you know, for me early in entrepreneurship, I, I felt like 
had to do everything and I felt like scattered and I was like oh my god like how do I simplify this and like for me I've been able coming into year two I've been able to get clear on like what are the key things it's posting daily on LinkedIn it's doing what I need to do with my podcast it's networking it's this it's that like just simplifying everything and breaking it down into monthly weekly daily things that I need to do and so I feel like from here it just continues to grow because you hold yourself to that to those things um so yeah like I'm excited for the podcast to grow um I'm excited for the community around the podcast to um really just show the power of community driven brands in a world that has so much content um so yeah like I'm I'm excited for everything to like just come together because you know like we've been talking about this whole conversation like the the what do you call it the um the business wouldn't have started if I hadn't started that podcast years ago when I wasn't trying to start a business Mm -hmm. the community that's naturally gravitating around what, what I'm doing wouldn't have started if I hadn't just genuinely built relationships with a lot of people in similar places with similar passions along all of these years. And so now as an entrepreneur, it's like, how do you bring these things together to really just create a Trojan horse? Yeah, you really, you've really learned the mindset thing a lot sooner than it took me to, because I, I look back, I look back now and um, it's, it's funny how energy and putting out there um of just wanting to be a good person and you know help people really move things along and, and for example i mean there's been plenty of times like you said like it may not be a channel it may be when i get a client or it may be something where i'm like oh like i have to help this type of company or i have to help this but funny enough like two months earlier i had a situation that, that did not go through that failed that I had to learn that. And then two months later, I get an even better opportunity that comes up. And I'm like, well, now I know this. How did this just happen like two months ago? It's yeah. crazy how the world works and how energy really goes your way if you just stay positive and try to weed out all that negative energy. Definitely. I'm a big, big energy person. If things if things don't align with my energy or if things disrupt my energy, it has to go. Yeah, I'm I'm doing a, an exercise right now. Um, um, have you ever read? Um, uh, it's a long title. It's a long title. It's basically how, it's it's something along the lines of how to love yourself. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent book, and it really just signifies to kind of look back and love yourself. But one of the exercises that I'm I'm setting into my agenda for the next week is I'm I'm going to sit down and and write down all of the things in the past that I may have regretted or done. And I'm going to go just go out into the wilderness for two to three hours and burn it. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, I'm, I'm afraid to, I have this fear. I have this fear of trying to, you know, combine these two situations, but um, I'm trying to get past that limiting belief myself. So, but I, uh, I totally get what you're saying. Energy is a huge thing. And, um, just trying to get away from the, just trying to get away from the the ever growing, like you said, mind's all over the place all the time. And it's, it's when you can sit down and, and uh, you know, even if your 10 year goal, your five year goal, your one year goal aren't like set, they don't have to be set in stone, you know, just kind of, you know, set them down and rough. And then, then you can break it down to small wins for yourself for the week. Exactly. Exactly. Live in the moment. So what is a, what is a, a win that you feel like that you have done? And we'll just say the past week that you, you would like to share with the audience. Ooh, um, the podcast launch has been very successful. So that's what I was alluding to. And I was like, you try a bunch of things that don't work mm-hmm. and then you find a thing that does work. And when it works, it works. And so I'm just incredibly grateful for just the reception how excited the guests are. Like that's the goal. Every podcast host, your goal is to make your guests look great and to make them feel special and to have them be the star of the show, like from end to end, whether it's like booking them to having the conversation to how it's promoted, like it's about them and 
that makes them even more excited to shout it to the rooftops when it comes out and publish all the clips and all that stuff. And like, it's just been such a great um, response. Like I'm, I'm so excited to just double down on it. I think that goes back to what you said, what we talked about earlier with, with value and um, giving value to other people doesn't necessarily have to be like, I'm going to do this service for you for free can be down to, (laughs) you know, I think a lot of people think that, that. (laughs) you know, so much advice on Twitter. That's like, if you want to start like a, an agency or a business, like make, find a skill, offer to do it for free, and then you'll get clients. I'm like, no, like, don't listen to that. Yeah, I agree. Don't listen, I agree. Don't do that. Cause you will like, you have to establish boundaries with yourself yes. and show other people how to treat you too. And yes. so you're always doing things for free. By the time you ask people for money, it's going to be too late. Yeah. And, and yeah, not to get a little bit cringe on that, but yeah, a lot of, a, a lot of people that you'll be doing stuff for free will just, you know, bring more people that will want stuff for free. So <laughs> that's just how it works. Um, and it, nothing against people, but if you don't set those expectations and you don't ask, or you don't learn to ask, or you don't learn to do that stuff, there's nothing wrong with charging, charging money. Um, but back to the value side, like you said, like that's the value. I mean, our YouTube channel, for instance, like I spend thousands on, you know, every month on getting that up to try to bring value to our audience, um, yeah. to try to teach them. And that's, that's part of like how I feel like I'm giving back, like, okay, like this is an expense. Okay. I, it's really an investment for me because I'm helping other people. Um, yeah. and so that's great. I love to hear that with your podcast. That's a good win. That probably that probably gives you a grin on your face, a yeah. grin on your face when you wake up every morning. And it's it's part of the helping to give back. And I love that. I love that. Um, and so yeah, I think we're getting close to an hour. So why don't we why don't we try to s- slow things down a little bit towards the end here? And why don't you tell people a little bit more about where they can find you? Um, and uh how they could reach out with to you if they need anything. Yes. Um, so you can find the New Game Labs podcast on YouTube um, and then also on Instagram and LinkedIn. So those are our core three channels, but all the episodes are published on YouTube. So keep an eye out for those. And then um, you can connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn, Kirby Porter on both channels, not a lot of Kirby's in the world. So you should be able to find me. Um, and yeah, like I, I definitely encourage people listening. If you've made it this far to like check out the podcast as a starting point and just like get a sense of the vision, basically, like how, how do you help sports creators and, and athletes in this new way? So that'd be a great starting point. If you have any questions, please reach out. All right. Well, thanks for uh, being on the, another episode of the Brand Power Analysis and have a good week. Get those wins. Get those wins. <laughs> <laughs>